The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, a great mystery. As we approach and enter into this celebration, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats takes away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. 
These are offered according to the law. Then he says, Behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord.
something new is happening. The beginnings are a little unclear. There is some movement. The first indicator was quite a while ago. The land of Judah was in difficulty, and the prophet Isaiah told King Ahaz that the Lord wanted him to ask for a sign from God of God's faithfulness. The king refused. Isaiah and God were annoyed by the king's response. Isaiah told him that the Lord would give him a sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. God is with us. God takes the initiative by offering the sign of divine faithfulness and fulfills it. God is starting something new. Hundreds of years later, the angel Gabriel is sent from God to Nazareth to a virgin named Mary. The angel tells her she has found favor with God and will conceive and bear a son she will name Jesus. God will give him the throne of David and his kingdom will not end. Another divine initiative, following up on the sign given to Ahaz. Before the angel Gabriel leaves, he tells Mary that nothing is impossible for God. Mary accepts the angel's message, saying, may it be done to me according to your word. Mary is far more receptive to God's initiative than was King Ahaz. She enters fully into what God is doing. Mary's son, Jesus, continues God's initiative. He says, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. Jesus does the will of God, his Father, suffering and dying on the cross. His resurrection, which we are celebrating in this Easter season, testifies to his doing God's will and reveals the divine initiative in a new way. God is always at work in our world and in the life of every person. The divine initiative has given us Jesus as a model of what God wants to do, conform us to the image of his Son. God's initiative continues inviting, drawing, challenging us to accept the love and grace God offers us. By becoming human through Mary, her son, the Son of God, shows us that our human nature can be transformed and we can become like Jesus. Mary's words guide us and we make them our own. May it be done to me according to your word. Let us profess our faith by reciting the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God and true God, not in our name, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake, he was crucified by the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on God who can do all things, let us offer prayers for the needs of all. For the Church, may the Holy Spirit breathe upon her faithful witness his gifts of comfort, peace, and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may our Almighty God safeguard their efforts of justice with his righteous spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, May the Lord send forth his mercy to the sick, poor, and homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Anointed One may sustain our monastic community along the narrow road by blessing our prayer and work. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord Jesus may beckon our beloved dead to join Mary and all the saints in the halls of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving Lord, hear the prayers that we offer, those for which we have found words and those still in the depths of our hearts. And in your love and mercy, grant them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son, may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly, she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the hosts of angels adore your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Meinrad, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Charles our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.